All right, howdy folks. Welcome to uh, NestNet. This is project day number eight. Um, we are connecting the NES to the internet via Wi-Fi, ESP8266. Starting to get these on YouTube. Uh, there's, If you're watching on YouTube, there's links in the description to the recap at the end. Uh, might be other links to... Uh, moments when we got certain things working or whatever we'll see but uh yeah so uh last time we implemented we worked on the um we've got a buffer effectively of uh 64 bytes Actually, is it 64 or? Yeah, 64. Right. Because there's, there's uh, five bits, or zero through five. There's six bits of address. Yeah, so the bit seven is whether it's read or write. So which which array are are we addressing the outgoing or the incoming array? And then bit six designates this addressing mode as far as the command is concerned. Um, and then zero through five are the uh, the byte to operate on. So in our um, our ESP, this is our ESP8266 firmware here. And we update those. We allow the NES6502 to read and update these variables. And when that happens, we get uh, we get the data back out. So we, there's there's two different arrays, right? Uh, one's outgoing and one's incoming. So it'd be your peer, your remote, or your local copy. So here we... I just ran this test to make sure it was working before the stream started. but So we can... We see one. This will... We want to write variable or the index number one. So we send that command. Here we can see that it, it it got the command. Now we need to write something. We're gonna write the variable, we're gonna write the value 67. Um, and then right now, anytime that a variable gets updated, the ESP goes ahead and transmits that entire array of 64 bytes. So that's why we see it here. We'll get fancier with it later but um oh and then we're able to do the opposite so we can send uh let's see so we do send udp client zero i think this is the order to do it And then what we want to do. So we have a we can write specific update a specific value or all of them. And this is just interpreted as ASCII. And I think it'll only update as many we all just starts at zero so it got the data it doesn't appear to have updated anything maybe there's a problem or maybe it didn't like that we didn't send everything 
So let's try to read. So the uh, command to read, we do, you can not really see that very good on the CRT. We read with four zero. So we have to write that command and then we can read. Yeah, so it doesn't look like it updated. I think it's because we didn't send enough data or did I? Let's just try variable number zero and we'll update it to A. It still doesn't look like it's a... Uh... doing anything. So the outgoing is not working. Makes the change and then and then we send a reply. That worked last stream. I don't know why it's not now. I'm not 100% sure that there's. So uh, let's just gloss over that for now. Um, we played with a lot of ideas on the mapper last time. For now, I think actually the easiest path forward to be able to get our code on here quickly is just implement uh, mapper 30 effectively because the flashing algorithm is already defined for that and it's familiar so let's just go with that uh, I believe so we had a problem where the uh, cartridge doesn't boot properly and I don't know why so let's take a step back here and work on the uh, CPLD mapper and hopefully we can get that booting like it should and and then we'll uh, I'm hoping to work on some of the 6502 code today finally to get data in and out of these buffers and Probably not today, but maybe next time we'll be able to get Phi Gratex Twitch chat client working. This dumb thing is giant and white and I can't make it smaller oh wait even when I grab it it won't it won't resize whatever just select the file and flash it OK, 
Okay. Move this boots right away. Yeah. Let's see if this changes anything here. So there it's booted up. Still doesn't seem to be updating. One way is working, not the other. I don't know why, but so let's. Uh, I want to try to make this so that we can. Mapper thirty is upper bank fixed, lower bank um, is swappable, and then when it's flashable. Eight thousand the lower bank is writing to the flash and C thousand is writing to the bank. All right. The other way around. Yeah, no, it's this C thousand is selecting the bank and the lower the the swappable bank is where you actually write the data. So we do Why do I have all these back? If uh what we got to CPU Yeah Why 
are you recording? All right. So if CPU address A14 is high, Let's say low. So this is a swappable bank. Else fixed bank. So CPU or PP. Rogue A eighteen through we don't actually have eighteen on this prototype, but we'll just write it with that and then change it. Um so it's five bit fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven, eighteen, yeah, five bit binary. So this would be we actually need a C thousand five through zero or four. Yeah, it's five bits. So I have 16k by banks. We need to make sure that program A13 always equals CPU A13. I actually need to make a map reg C thousand. So at 8,000, 12 through 14 will be zero. Now if it's – but it's – if we decode a 12 and a 14, through a fourteen. It has to be specifically that, but C 
So if a 14 has to be high. Yeah. So this would be the register at C thousand. It uses bits. Um, six and seven for the CHR. Did I say six and seven? I meant six and five. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah. C thousand is where the mapper register is. Eight thousand is where you make the rights. So I I think this will work. Is that there we go? I think it'll still work in the NES, even though, because I only really use in the last few K byte. Okay, so it is booting. Um, so let's start talking. Oh, my camera is not focusing. Restart it, that seems to fix it. All right. So, um, that's not what I'm going to do. Okay, detected RAM at PPU 1000. The manufacturing ID failed though. CHR RAM banking test passed, that's good. Um, what did this script start out as? Oh, color dreams. Why? Oh. 
What about the output enable pin? And the right pin? Not 100% sure about those. We don't want rights. This does seem to be changing the bank like we expected because the CHR RAM banking test wouldn't pass otherwise. CPU writes, but this manufacturing ID has to Get an FF. We got to get something else here if we want any hope to uh, Yeah, you can't find that file, huh? No, of course you can't. All right, so let's see uh, How does this board have those control signals wired to what we're expecting for mapper 30. No, that's not what I wanted you to do. I did not make any changes. All right, let's see. So. So the read write pin is connected straight to the CPU. I think that's going to be a problem for mapper 30. Open up my mapper 30 design here quick. Verify that's the case, but I think we don't have a. Well, maybe we could. There's a W right nail pin, so that could be connected to the same thing, I think. We have to hack the board though. So program write enable. Yeah. is controlled by the multiplexer. So depending upon the state of A13, we either sent pass write enable to the program or to this to the uh, flash. So let's see here. If we wanted to make the flash write enable pin separate, and we're going to have to make some changes to the board. I'm not very well set up to stream PCB changes, but whatever. Oh, it might just be a jumper. Oh, wait a second.
What am I doing with? Oh, the CPLD doesn't have that pin. That's a problem. So that idea is not going to work. <clears throat> I'm having a hard time deciding the best mapper to set this thing up as so we can get data on there. How does my so so mapper thirty is not truly an option because we we don't have a pin to spare. That's a pain. But the only real thing we can't support about mapper thirty is the flashing. So this cartridge is flashable as mapper MMC1. That's what I've been doing it as. Now, Color Dreams uses, I guess, I guess we could do this. Let's set it up like my discrete mapper boards where expansion zero is connected to the right enable pin. Um, about MMC1. So MMC1 has, it flashes it. in a 32k byte mode which is actually a little easier which is what we what we did have before in a 32k byte banking mode as long as your bank select registers don't collide with the command for aa in 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 D555, you're fine. So we could keep we could keep the bank select register at C thousand.
and then our our unlock commands won't change the bank. So we can set the bank right to A thousand, D thousand, and then write anywhere we want. And that might change the bank if it's at C thousand, but it will happen at the end after the flash has already happened. What's the real benefit of C thousand versus eight thousand? I don't know. I don't think. I kind of like that register being at eight thousand. So our nest net is based on we just have to change these uh, rights. Let's go that route. So now the decoding is only at 8,000. Okay. So let's change our this to CPU NES CPU write D A D It doesn't look like we got manufacturing ID. script I think I am yeah so why doesn't that work why is it not like MMC one in that respect because the bank doesn't matter Did we? Yeah, A13 and A14.
what about um, so if it's a read it's ROM select for the output enable pin actually changes anything. I think it's the same logic. Is this bootable? Yes. Let's try MMC1 and see what happens. It's still not. Okay. Let's try this again. Still not, so we had issues where the uh, we tried to enable WRAM, things were broken. I'm still not sure that there's not some wiring bug on this cartridge. Make sure our pinout's like we think it is. Yeah, I cannot read. But if I, let's flash MC1 on here. There we got it. So what's the real difference here? So we put it in a 32k byte mode, which is effectively where we are. And that registers at 8,000. Also. I think this will boot with the MMC1 mapper.
Yep. So what's the deal? Check our constraint editor, I guess. Oh, does what about PPU or CPU A13? So here the CPLD is setting it to A13. And I'm pretty sure the board Yeah. So A13 comes, there's this jumper here. I don't have that closed, do I? No. I don't know. <clears throat> this is stupid. Um, let's let's verify our pinouts as we expected, though, because we had issues before. And Maybe it's related. So here's the modifications that we made to the PCB. If we need to look at those, okay. Data one is pin two. CPU A12. And we, we swapped that one, I believe. Pin four. CPU A12 to PPU A12. Did we did we cut that? I assume we did, but did we? Cut on the bottom and on the top. Yeah. I'm going to assume that's right for now. Yeah. 
ESP2 to CA16. Because CA15 and 16 aren't actually connected to anything. On the CA, oh, yeah, they are. Wait, no, CHR RAM, no. The, well, the yeah, A10 and A11, we supposedly bodge wired those. I don't have any glitching going on, it's just NES side or CPU sides. CHR A13. Mm hmm. Prog A17. And then PA18, we change that to an input and have that. We're not actually driving. We have. There is no program A18. Okay, that's good. CHR A14. Okay. ESP one and zero are fourteen and fifteen. Yeah. All right, and then data five is pin sixteen, M two seventeen. CPU A13, yep, output enable, what is that connected to? Default jumper to program output enable. Where's that guy? Just make sure I didn't cut that or something. It's that one right there. Looks right. WRAM chip enable. That also has the jumper. It's closed by default. Signal LX chip enable. There we go. Yeah, okay. CPU A fourteen. Our Q is pin twenty two. by default. Looks right. D2. D2. 
d3 yep yep d7 and these things are by default right lx d7 yeah pa13 yep d0 ROM A16, 15, 14, data 6. Yep, 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 yep. ROM select NAND CA expansion ASP pin 3. Forty three, forty four. What about? Oh, this is not assigned for some reason. Oh, I must have been tinkering with this. This is supposed to be 44. It shouldn't have really changed anything since it's just an input. But why didn't it assign it to something? Makes me wonder if you even synthesized like I thought it did. If it didn't assign a pin. Let me check out our warnings. Where's my warnings? Oh, yeah, pen is ignored. Okay. I don't know. Well, I don't think I have the patience to do this. I can't flash this stupid cartridge. Um, yeah, I can flash it if I switch it over to MMC one and then go back again. I should not have these problems. And what's the difference? What am I stuck in 32 K byte mode? Output enable pins the same. The write enable pin the same, and so is the chip enable. The 
circuit's the same. The only thing is, is the MMC one has to be put in 32K byte mode where ours is supposed to be hardwired to that mode. We have a bank at register 8000. But the thing that I don't, the, the, uh, the flat, it's booting fine. The thing that I wonder about is we had a problem where the ES, the cartridge wouldn't boot until the ESP was started up. In that one setting, that's a red flag. Uh, it makes me think things are not as I... I got all these weird indications and I feel like... Whoops. I feel like they've got to be related. So what pin is the So pin 4 14 15 40 4 Now on the PCB CA sixteen like that shouldn't matter. These two shouldn't matter. What is NAN CA connect to? It's got a jumper to PA0. Did we cut that default jumper? <clears throat> Pretty sure I did. Can't see it very good. Yeah, let's cut. I don't know. Part of me wants a 
different cartridge anyway. Why going to MMC1 would change anything? I don't know. So what are we going to do here? We don't have an easy way of flashing this cartridge without changing the CPLD every time. Got to get something useful done today. I think it's safe to say I've got to get whatever the heck is going on with this cartridge figured out off stream because wire up another cartridge, make sure it's doing the same thing or whatever. I don't know. But there's got to be something weird going on based on the fact that I can't enable WRAM without causing things to crash. Short on the board or something dumb. And just see what happens. Boots. But if I write to WRAM, I bet it crashes. That's what I was doing before. Oh, yeah, it crashed. It just didn't. So I can read, but it's dead right now. I can't do anything. So that tells me that WRAM chip enable is connected to something that it shouldn't be. Okay, what it could be. It's not close to anything. That would be modifications. Whatever. <clears throat> we can use the INL Retro to test some of these things. But then the other question is, is why did our ability to things are not going our way today we cannot let's try to write let's try to write or
update the variables, figure out why that's not working from the right, from the uh, the remote host. So that's 36, 37, 38, 39, 41. Fifty-one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sixty-one, two, three, four. Make sure that our firmware is flashed on like we th think it is. We should actually be able to do this from the device here because So if we get here, send UDP Please tell us if we're getting what we think we should be there. It because the updates wouldn't be happening if we didn't get in there, so let's try that. It is. Doesn't look like we sent this. Receive, then it it read everything out. It does not appear that these things happened.
doesn't match. So unknown command received. And then can we just print what we what the command was if we just do Try that. Yeah, unknown command received. Oh, I think I put quotes in there and I wasn't supposed to. Dang it. There it is. <laughs> okay. Well, at least that's in there now. Uh, so if we don't know the command, then we have some indication as to um, One thing I would like to have is the 6502 be able to tell the tell the cartridge which a host to connect to instead of instead of this being part of the firmware have the IP address of this the remote server and port be a variable um, So let's try to figure out a way to do that. Uh, I also want to support larger messages. Um, So right now, here's where we have the variable command. With that bit being set. So we have a, a different Um, this type of addressing can be slower. It's not as big of a deal. I want to try to make this stuff fast. Uh, so part of me says we could just set 
the command equals data and command mode also equals data. So we're in, we're in data mode, um, but we need Let's make a different flag. So we'll make a command flag. Well, do we necessarily need to do that though? If you think about it this way, so we, we stored the command, uh, now we're assuming that all the commands are one byte long. To support longer than one byte commands, it would have to be longer, we'd have to, we may not So that would get more complex for more complicated instruction modes. But so we we have the command, and that's accessible by the main function. So here is data mode, right? But in the variable else. Hey, Magic Slinky, thanks for the uh, follow. So we are uh, we're working on the firmware right now for the ESP8266. Defining command set. We tried to get the cartridge flashable today, and I, I can flash it if I set it to MMC1 mirror but or mapper. I think I've got some bug on my cartridge. It's short somewhere, I don't know. It's acting dumb, so we're just focusing on this stuff for today. So, um, trying to decide so if we're relying on the main to process this data uh, bugging the cartridge yeah it is still alive and I did not try blowing in it it boots and everything um, for the most part it's it's acting as I expect um, we just can't flash it. I get, I don't get the product manufacturing ID like I expect. And if I can't get that, then I'm not going to be able to flash the cartridge. If I set it to MMC1, then I can flash it. I don't, so I don't know. I couldn't figure it out. It really doesn't make sense to me why that doesn't work. So instead of slamming my head on the table for an hour or more, or longer I've already been going for an hour and a half and to get much done for that first hour so 
shift gears into the firmware. Um, so the thing that I'm I think we want to uh, store this data in an array instead of just a single byte. Um, Because if it's so, if we're if we're sending the like the IP address or the port number, like these are multi-byte things. Um, so what if we do this? Let's let's have this be a two hundred fifty-six byte buffer uh, so then we'll keep track of what the current index is data index equals zero. So we store the command, we'll set the pointer, the index to zero. And so when the data starts coming in, we'll just store it. And increment the index. So we won't. Uh, so why is data main an array? Oh, that's a great question. I did not mean to do that. Uh, thank you. In my head, I did it that way. But then I just blindly copied the uh, line above. So thank you for that. To keep you awake, stranger. It was a test. You passed. Okay. So data main array. So we'll store the byte. And because as, as, as soon as we fetch that byte, the 6502 is allowed to write another. Um, and this way it won't, we'll, we'll catch each byte. Um, part of me says, um, So we got to we got to get out of this mode at some point. Uh, we need to go back to command mode, and this is where like the rainbow is set up to say, "Hey, how many? How much? How much data is coming down the pipe?" So, so part of me says that the first byte of data, we can just kind of do that for now. Um, the first byte of data is is the length. But we don't want to make a comparison to something that's not. Well, if 
if we store the first byte, uh, miso ISR is called when we get, uh, no, so this is the other way around. This is actually, uh, we have a, a spy shift register and I actually, I'll kind of show you here on my, show you my, effectively my, my block diagram here. Why is it not showing you? My software is being done. There we go. They're not on that. Some problems with this before stream. Maybe I can't get it to go. Close it and try again. Cross fingers. Otherwise, I'll just talk. Not. Wanting to comply today. Anyway, we've got a. Uh, there we go. No, see, then it like locks up. Is this set to display mode? Maybe that's my problem. VGA projection. If I turn it off and turn it back on. There we go, fixed it. So, Genos, how good is the 6502 with C code? Not very. Uh, you can do it. There is a C assembler or a C compiler, CC65. It's, it's really, yeah. Well, it depends upon the, like the AVR C compilers are pretty good. I would argue with AVR at Mel microcontrollers that uh, I mean those C, those processors are effectively designed for C sixty five or two no. Um. So we're actually, I mean you can you can write in C for sixty five or two. It's not efficient. And it, in my opinion, it's not really C because, like, for example, you there's a software stack for the function arguments. Now you could probably write a better C compiler, but it's like you need to really understand the 6502 to write a good compiler for it. And then once you do that, like, you're you're always going to be constrained writing. A, assembly for 6502 really isn't that bad once you're experienced with it so it's like yeah but anyway so this is what we got here so we got internet right your home network a router wi-fi so this esp chip is uh we wired up to our cartridge so here's the card that we got right now, and I just plug it into here. Anyway, so our ESB chip, this is the code that we're working on right now. So we write this in C. Yeah, it is a lot. It is like part of the, it is simpler to write assembly in the sense that you don't have to learn the nuances of CC65. Could there be a better C compiler for 6502? Yes. Is the time it would take 
to write that compiler worthwhile for anybody that could do it. I don't know. Like it could be useful for other people, but you could also just use CC65 anyway. Um, this code is in C for the ESP8266. I, well, I guess technically it's C++, but whatever. Um, I'm writing it as it's C. Uh, so this firmware is what is handling the 803, the, uh, the Wi-Fi stack and incoming UDP and TCP. That it's, it's handling all of that stuff for us. Simplest relative. Yeah, do you want your code to look simple? Do you want simple development process? Do you want, yeah. It's like, what can you, what's the, uh, The, the the abstraction value of C six sixty five I don't think is that great. It comes at the cost of inefficiency, and it's like, well, if you really have to understand the underlying hardware, you and the compiler's not that good. It's it, there's not as much to be leveraged. Um. Anyway, yeah. So we have a uh, we've got four pins on this little guy. This is like the cheapest modules they have. It's also the easiest just because they, they sock it easily. I don't really anticipate to use these. Yeah, I wouldn't use objects. Well, and I spend so much time thinking on low level stuff. It's like my like mentality of what an object is is very different from someone who programs in a higher level language all day. But anyway, so uh, we just, there's a, a serial register in the mapper here. The NES can read and write to this register. It's an 8-bit register. It can read and write to this register in parallel. And the ESP reads and writes to it serially. So there's four pins. You got an input to the register, an output, a clock, and then... Uh, there's a fourth pin that's used to control which um, mode this shift register is operating, parallel or serial. So this is the medium in which, yeah, I don't rely on functions too much. I don't know, functions are pretty helpful, but we're going to be working on a library of functions for the 6502 that other people can use. That way they don't have to understand the specifics of exactly how this register works. They can just have data in RAM or wherever and uh, kind of like the Famicom disk system has helper functions for getting data on and off of the uh, disk. So uh, yeah, this this is the firmware that we're working on. So when to to answer your question from back when MISO ISR, this subroutine is called when the 6502 writes to this register in the CPLD, it takes one of the, the output pin low and that generates an interrupt on the the ESP and call and gets this function called. So we want to be quick about it because we want to get the data out and be ready for the 6502 to write more data. We don't really know when this stuff is coming, so we want to set it up to be prepared to uh, accept more. Um, so you're playing with sending packets a few days ago. Remember what the memory happened? Okay, cool. Yeah, so we... we uh, We've got the two arrays of the 64 bytes, and now I'm wanted to have commands besides that. And so that's what we're working on here. So my thought right now I want to have it to where the uh, the 6502 can communicate things like the server to connect to. Ultimately want to start implementing things like uh via gray text twitch chat client 
So um, we need to write those 6502 libraries to help make that happen, but I can't get this cartridge. Pro I mean, we could do it. It's just the steps and flashing this thing every time would be a pain. So I think this week I'll make another cartridge or something. Try to figure that out so we can actually start writing some C6502 next week. But working on these other parts. So, um, I have ideas on on uh, other addressing modes, but I kind of just want to have a, a basic one. It's not necessarily going to be the most efficient, but I don't know how much it really matters if uh, This might be the way to do it. Because this data is not communicated frequently. Um, or if it is communicated frequently, it's larger, so sending a byte. So here's my thought. Today's day eight. Yeah. So we we start off in command mode, and we have an eight by eight bit command, and then we've got our. This is a two hundred and fifty six. We set this up. called it data main so the the interrupt service routine is that's fetching this data is ambig ambiguous to what's going on here or it, it doesn't it's kind of blind to what's going on as far as the command itself and the data will process those in the uh, in the main function so plan to use the 86k C compiler. My program is too big to port to ASM anyway. Yeah, what's your uh, the 80 the, the Intel 86k? Is it a are you sorry target are you? I'm curious what your project is. Migrating to the 6502 or something, so or is it something else entirely? Uh, but the the main thing that this interrupt service routine needs to know is when it goes back into command mode, because we don't want to be stuck. Yeah, okay, 68k. That's what it was. Yeah, the well, and the 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 Motorola 68000 is. Uh, that's a processor that's fairly well suited for for C program. Well, it's not. I guess it's not an eight bit, but sixteen. Pouring Quake three to the NES. Seriously? <laughs> oh, wireframe. I'm curious. If you have stuff to share, drop it in. We'll go check it out. But. Uh, so we we need to know when to get out of this mode and i'm thinking the best way to do that is have this first bite oh you're just kidding. <laughs> so this will be uh the length so we'll update Right, so when we first go into command mode, and then we'll we'll increment this along to fill this array. 
but when are we done? Do some 3D graphics and older consoles. Pouring Doom may be too much. Yeah. Although, uh, there's that Raspberry Pi project or whatever, where somebody's got Doom running on the NES. Uh, so, let's see. I'm thinking that I want this value when it's equal to len, then we go to command mode. Or If you don't like the length header, 6502 can send 7 bit data. Well, yeah, but 7 bit data is annoying. Right now, we, ha we just have, we could, we could, well, and this is kind of what I wanted. I have ideas of, uh, a couple different modes so one mode would be quick or long to where we know uh, okay yeah so my my one thought so so for right now we've got bit seven being used if we're expected to uh, read or write if the 652 is expecting to read or write data from the register on subsequent commands the bit 6 is that quick indexing mode with those variables bit 5 is meant to be the length so in a medium addressing mode the length would be designated in the lower nibble in a long mode it would be in the next byte. Um, so I guess maybe we could just do the medium right now, but uh, the idea is, is bit five would differentiate between those two. Could you add modern chips to a cartridge? Yeah, well, within the limits of what the NES can render. Uh, like the biggest limitation that you can't really get around on the NES is the color attributes, the palettes. Um, but yeah, it you you could effectively render full motion video from the cartridge, but the color data would be limited. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was thinking. So uh, for these, maybe we'll just go ahead and implement this. But uh, so we have the if bit five is whether we're in medium or long mode. Medium mode, the length would be in the nibble of the command, and. Uh, yeah this is a uh, this video does a pretty good job of explaining kind of the limitations of of what you can and can't do you can do quite a bit uh but getting the timing exactly right is is not trivial uh yeah so bit five is was my idea to and then i had bit four is is special if there's certain things that we want to special commands that we want to send but it would still be
Oh no, it's fine. Not a problem. So maybe we'll let's maybe let's uh So if we're just assuming the long mode data main zero equals so if data index equals data main now we're, we're we should be okay in this case because we're storing the first byte and then we're analyzing it if that's equal then We have all of our data. We want to set command mode to opcode. Um, what was that flag? Not update flag, but command flag. So this is the signal to the main loop to process everything. I guess the one thing that we want to be cautious of is we can't, the main loop needs to process this data before we could actually send another command because it's not all contained in the interrupt service routine. Um, really, I guess there should be another, yeah, basically that's what's going on in that one. This is interesting stuff though, but yeah, I've got, yeah, double buffering would be one way of doing it. And that that should be Yeah, if we had two of them We could use command flag to say which which buffer was just filled or something like that. Anyway, let's try let's try to. St I do think that the double buffer is going to be the way to do that, or the easier way. But let's see here. So. This is long mode. I forget how Rainbow Mapper does it. I would like it to be a direct comparison, but we could do math to change it. If command and is 
that what it was? Else. Uh, medium. Command. Length in opcode lower nibble. So we're still going to store it. It's just, when are we going to quit? Yeah, I, I don't know if this is like, I'm curious what, uh, it's probably not easy to explain. But I'm I'm curious what your I don't really have much for ideas for other ways to do it, but to some degree, some of these decisions that I'm making or, or have made have been uh, based on how we got here. Because I didn't necessarily think this is how I was going to do it, but one of the things that I wanted to try to do is limit the communications between the 6502 and the ESP, um, leverage the processing power that the ESP has to reduce the You'd write this code in a C library and test programs. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, this uh, the CPU for the the ESP is a uh, I don't know something crazy. It's a 32-bit. I forget what they call it. L106 Tensilica Extensa Diamond Standard running at 100 and 160 micro running at we actually have overclocked 160. The thing is is like uh I'm so the C code that I write, I'm so used to running on an embedded system that like like this yeah, that's that's the thing. This this just happens to be it's a Chinese chip. It's basically the cheapest Wi-Fi chip on the market. It's a small microcontroller. I guess maybe like medium, I don't know. It's not a it's not a little 8-bit guy running at, you know, 8 megahertz or whatever. It's a 32-bit running at 80 to 160 megahertz. Um, but yeah, the, the, the chip doesn't actually have any instruction ROM stored in like most microcontrollers. It only has instruction RAM, which has to get buffered in from a external spy chip. So they made this silicon as cheap as possible by keeping it as an, as a, as a one RAM process, logic RAM. There's no NOR flash in there. Um, so the, the entirety of the code is on the step separate chip. So like, while I'm not used to being able to, uh, the processor that I'm writing for and being similar to the, like the libraries and stuff that I'm calling, I'd have to write my own, uh, versions of those to be able to really test. And so when it comes to firmware development, like 
is kind of there are other ways to do it especially when there's a development environment and gdb and stuff is set up for them but like this chip mm, you spend a lot of time getting that stuff set up or just do it so let's see if we're in medium mode if data index is equal to command and Hey Zesty, how we doing? I'm doing pretty well. Oh well, I couldn't get my cartridge to flat. I tried to get the develop the uh, flashing scripts, but I couldn't. I couldn't get the pro the manufacturing product ID out of the chip. So I think I got some bug on the cartridge. So we're just gonna keep plugging away at the firmware. Um, right now I'm trying to set it up. Yeah, used to having program interfaces like this, having distraction on top and re-implementing those interfaces. Yeah. Part of it is it's like there's so many layers to what I have going on here because we have we have the 6502, which I haven't even really written much code for. I wrote this test ROM, which I can poke and peek registers. Um, then we have the... Verilog uh, running on the it's not running it's synthesized and flashed onto the uh, CPLD and then we have this firmware which also has a whole library Arduino library that like getting that I mean you could like emulate it uh but yeah so if the length is equal to the lower nibble then we're done My other idea is that, so, bit four would actually be, if that's set, then the length is defined based on the command itself, and you can put commands in the lower nibble but that's a, it'll be easier to move if we if we find that we're using commands frequently and we want a, a dedicated command for that then we can move it over in long mode you want the main routine to ignore the first byte yeah uh really i don't even know how valuable this is but it it cuts down on uh, one less byte that needs to be transferred if you're not sending that much data. Well, and the the main pro the main loop is always going to be what it does. Well, command doesn't actually store much. Instead of this being command, it's more like an addressing mode byte. Um, the now we could 
we can store bits of, of command information, but we're using a lot of it for knowing which the, the structure of the data that follows. So this is to some degree, I, I would call it the, the op code, but the command itself would probably, what we want to do with the data would probably exist here. What we want that when, when the 6502 is communicating with the ESP on what to do with this data, it would actually probably be there. Get the value of the medium mode versus long. Saying is that the main program needs to know how it should interpret the data. Right. If, and right now we're just working on the, the length of the data. Um, we could have, because really in this opcode, we're using these upper bits of the upper nibble as uh, the addressing mode. I do have one bit available here. Bit four could be special. And that would allow us to put the command here. Um, but that then require that the, the drawback of that is the length would have to be implied. So we have to go look it up. Um, and we have to do that in here. Well, I think I understand what you're saying. I, 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 well, and in reality, uh, at this stage, we're not having the main do anything until all of the data has been received. We could, we could take other routes, but this is just where we're starting off. In long mode, data main is the length. Uh, and in data main, yeah. Yeah, we ha just haven't got to that far, that far yet. Um, part of it is, is I want to keep this interrupt service routine small. And so all of these different modes that we have, uh, complicated, but All right, let's see. So let's, let's, uh, so this is my main loop. Uh, what do we want to do? So I, I guess we could just start by having it send the packet of Um, now this expects there to be a, I think we need a, maybe we don't need a new line character. How does, 
Oh, it, I, th I think send UDP. Yeah, it is a string. So either the new line would have to be in We'll just leave it as that. But we'll have to we'll have to write the the last byte. I mean, in reality this is it may not be a string, just a, a payload of data. <clears throat> I just happen to be printing it. Um, we could do this though. When we get to the end, we could add Just for uh, so this will be the next one. It it limits how far we can actually go. We don't have much protection if we go past the end of the array right here. But Oh, actually, I don't think it's new line. Uh, I think it's. I think it's just zero. What could go wrong? Exactly. All right. I'm trying to think of what our test is really going to be for this. <clears throat> well, we can just we can just use our poke and peek test ROM. The I know retro could test a lot faster though. Um, to speak to your your test methodology to some degree. I need to it's an it's expecting a character array I think we can just change this I've got, I've used it quite a bit so far. We'll probably get into it today, but my INL Retro Programmer Dumper, I basically can emulate the 6502 with this thing. So that allows me to write test scripts in Lua uh, that I use a lot for, t for verifying the hardware was working how I, for debugging and, and figuring out how the hardware is behaving like I wanted it to when we're working on the on the uh, CPLD code and stuff like that but like I spent years developing this tool it just happened to have it uh, and and can make use of it but if I didn't have this in reality you'd be better off to write the uh, code 
from 6502. All right. So, let's see. Okay, it's awake and talking to us now. So 5,000 is where this register is. We let's try let's try the medium mode first. So we two zero is the long mode. Um so it's all the upper bits clear. The lower nibble is going to be the length. So if we want to send one byte, I think we can just write this command. So it got that. Now the actual data. Let's just send 5F, write it. Oh, look, it just keeps sending it over and over again because we didn't clear the, uh, we didn't clear the, command flag. That. I think I'm going to take a quick break. But let's uh, try this one more time. All right. And let's uh let's uh let's send ASCII. Oh, that's a terrible image. Okay, so so ASCII capital A is is hex forty one. So let's try to send that. So five thousand. We're gonna send one byte, and we're gonna send hex forty two. So I haven't actually written anything yet. So we'll write the command and then we'll write the value. Oh, I was off by one. Oh yeah, B. That's right. I just looked at the wrong line. So it should be it should be back in command mode again. So we should be able to write this and write A this time. Hey, look at that. So if we send three bytes, well, three bytes, so let's send A, B, C, 41, 42, 43, 0, 1, 2, 3. It's, it went ahead and sent. It seems like 
because as soon as we, it, it took three and when we sent 41 it transmitted a it should have waited so our length comparison didn't didn't work I wonder if my mask is Anyway, I'll let you stare at that. Um, I'm having problems with pack with uh, dropping frames too. It appears. Anyway, I'll take a break here. I'll be right back. We'll figure out what's going on there, and then hopefully. Hopefully the frames aren't an issue, but I'll be, I'll be back.
So, <clears throat> this is always true, apparently. Let's power cycle this guy. <clears throat> Try it again. So let's let's set this to four to start. Write four. And we'll write whoops. Yeah, a I went ahead and sent. So this seems to always be evaluating to true, and we're actually here. I guess let's go ahead and try try this one. So if we set bit two, this lower nibble doesn't mean anything. And then the first byte that we write is the length. So command mode that, this is the length. See, it went ahead and, and sent that value, even though Oh, well, one was the length. So it doesn't make any sense to say one. Let's try it again. So if we actually want to write two bytes, we write the length plus the next byte. Okay, so it didn't send anything. Now let's send B. Okay, yeah. So then it's the length 2 and B. So if we increase this to 4, we write it. We're going to write 4 bytes. Length plus 3. And then A, B, C. Okay, so that works. Um, this one is not working. I don't know if my bit mask is no good for command. What's command? These things seem to be working.
It's an int. So command bit masked. Let's try that. I don't know why that's not working. All right, so let's try the rainbow again, make sure it's still working. So two zero, we wanna write four bytes and we're gonna write ABC, right, 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 ABC, okay. Now, if we write one, we're going to send one byte. C. Two. Why doesn't that work? Well, in reality, it's supposed to be all the other values are zero. So we should just be able to do that. We shouldn't actually have to mask it. Here I said data index is equal to the first byte. Here if data index is equal to the command.
this doesn't actually change. It's just when we're done that changes. Let's try that. So that works, the variable mode. If we send, if we want to send four bytes in this mode though, don't get why command is oh gosh darn it Miss my damn per curly braces. Yeah. This is mid lang mask. So it it wasn't setting this, it was just it was just doing it. So it wasn't null terminating, but it seemed to be still working. I don't I don't know if the I guess it's already zero. It's if you write a shorter one then you wanna terminate it. So it was still working just based on it being initialized to zero. Part of me says for that reason that this buffer should be 257 bytes long. If we really want to deal with strings like that, but really we don't want to necessarily think of everything as a string. If you want it to be a string, then 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 the payload, the raw data itself, can be a string. But this okay, I think that'll fix it. Curly braces. I usually write those. Why did I not? How did I miss that? Oh, I... okay. Let's try that again. 
again. So I kind of like the double buffer idea. I think <coughs> I think we stand a pretty good chance of I don't know it's like we, this the ESP should be able to why edit in vim but compile in vs code because I cannot stand vs code's vim plugin and my uh <laughs> patience for figuring it out. I don't really like VS Code. I can't say as I've ever really given it the time of day. It just, VS Code is better than Arduino. Oh, because I haven't taken the time to compiling plat with Platformio on the command line. I do want to do it that way. Well, from the command line instead of... I don't really think, I mean... You can compile from Vim, I guess, but really it's just command line. Platformio is, uh, it, it's basically like a real engineer's version of Arduino. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's targeted for, uh, making development of embedded systems easier. It manages libraries and stuff for uh, embedded systems, and it <clears throat> it uh, is an alternative to using Arduino. Yeah, I I'm with you, uh, and that's that's what I prefer to do as well. It's just the documentation on this. Uh, microcontroller is so weak uh i i don't know how uh in the libraries that i want to use i if this if this weren't a chinese cheap microcontroller I, that's what i'd be doing but this was working and uh there, there really aren't many people that do it that way when it comes to developing for this for this processor. It can be done, uh, but yeah. All right, so I think we fixed the problem. Let's test it here. So we will send we'll send four bytes. And <clears throat> for this guy, for my for my INL retro, it's a little Cortex ARM zero or ARM Cortex M zero. That's what I I wrote my own linker scripts and all that. I don't like the libraries that are packaged with those things. They're just so bloated. Um, but this guy on the other hand, so four bytes. Uh. I didn't actually write anything yet. Oh no, I did. Okay, data by so it got my command. So let's send A B C 41, 42, 43, or I guess D, because of four bytes. A B C D. If we send two bytes. D E. And it I think our our null terminator helped us out there in this debug method here. So but yeah, Platformio doesn't have to run in visual code or VS code or whatever, Visual Studio code. It does have a command line option but I wanted to prove it working with what 
it's best documented first and most people are doing and it hasn't upset me too much to give up on it yet okay so this seems to be working um What now? We have we could we could implement double buffering. Oh, don't do that, Paul. So one thing that I was thinking about is really um, what could be powerful here is we have this this buffer. I, I do want to implement it the other way so that we can send a packet of data and the ESP the 6502 can read it. Um, so that's one thing we could go ahead and do. The other thing is, is this data transfer, um, where the actual information ends up in the memory of the ESP can could be arbitrary um, we could have some really big block of RAM we're only supposedly using 364,000 bytes out of 80 so there's like 80.5 kilobytes on this thing something like that and we're, we're only using like 44% slash there's program data too. I think this is just out of an eight megabyte flash chip. But it would be We could have like eight K bytes of just raw memory. <clears throat> One thing that I I do want to do, but don't want to do at the same time. Lots of there's not a lot of people that are keen on leveraging uh, the ESP as a coprocessor um, because it's cheating. Personally, I don't really care. Cheating is, whether or not something's cheating is up for the developer to decide whether or not you want to use features that I make available in hardware that, well, that, that you, don't, you don't have to, you do what you want. But I think it would be, well, so assuming that it's not 
one is of the mind that it's not cheating, then the biggest like challenge for an, an NES developer is you have to develop code, develop the firmware on the ESP, which is not trivial. It is very doable. I mean, here I am doing it. Um, but what if instead of if we had a if we had a a sixty five oh two emulator here? I don't know how. I I think I think this processor could emulate six five oh two fairly quickly. Part of my like thought is is like. There's so much RAM. We could have like a an eight k byte space, and I don't know when I actually get to this, but I like the idea. It sounds like fun to have a sixty five hundred two emulator, so you could write assembly code that you would intend. You know, you could write it in the same like context of of the NES, except for the all the registers aren't the memory maps not the same but it would be a 6502 so you could load code into this thing and then have it execute routines for you on anyway I would like to have some sort of a genius. <laughs> That's what I think it would be fun. Whether or not it's like a a good solution or I don't know. It would be I I, I think it would be fun. And it would be I mean you're still writing 6502 code. I've long wanted to make a 6502 emulator. I don't know. Anyway, maybe we should just go ahead and implement the other direction. Have a have a data packet come in, but really this this array, this command and data, this is intended to be unidirectional only from the 6502 out the other direction this the ESP gets data right it does something with it and if the 6502 wants to read from that I think that one of the easiest ways to do it would be this method of uh, you know messages can be arbitrary length maybe you segment this RAM or whatever and say, oh, I want to read message number zero and that's at a certain location. Um, or you could arbitrarily set that pointer to anywhere in that block of RAM. Um, so maybe let's just do that because that's the best way. Hey, Sakanaka, how we doing? So uh, we we tried to write some 6502 code today, but well, we tried to get the cartridge flashable, and it's not it's not the easiest. I'm having problems. So off stream, I'm gonna make another cartridge or figure out what's going on with this guy. I can't read the manufacturing ID, but we have we have a means of sending longer messages now. We can actually there's no real limit. Well, the the current limit is 256 bytes because length is a byte. So if length was set to zero, that would be 256 bytes. So you send, this is what we've got so far. 
so we've got this long mode where you send the eight byte or the eight bit opcode, one byte. The next byte, and this requires bit five to be set. But in this addressing mode, it's similar to the rainbow mapper. The next byte of data is the length. So then when, you, when you've received that much data, then you go back into command mode. The medium addressing mode, bit five is clear and the lower, this isn't actually, oh, this is from, this is my idea for special. Where the length is implied. What we did was medium. Where this is all zero. And this is length in the lower nibble. And we can have up to 16 bytes. So we have that working. Uh, keep losing my kind of jumping around here and there and everywhere, but ultimately what I want to get to is a place where um, We want to communicate the IP address and port number and stuff. <clears throat> now, one way of doing that would be creating specific commands to do so. Connect to, you know, set connection number zero to IP address, blah port number blah tcp udp whatever it is now in those i guess the length would be implied so 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 maybe we could do that and that's that's what i'm talking about here um the other idea right so we we talked about just having having a big block of RAM and maybe this is like 8k byte total or something like that we've got we've got quite a bit to spare what's that what's that actually eight one nine two oh minus Three six four nine two. We've got forty four k bytes to spare. Now we don't want to push us all the way up to that limit, but it wouldn't necessarily be crazy to have thirty two k bytes. But eight is if we. I mean, eight's quite a bit, and uh, there's still a lot to spare. So if it were 8K byte, so one of my, my ideas is uh, we just have a pointer, which would, you know, arbitrarily point somewhere in here. And then um, the 6502 could be updating this. Incoming messages could be ending up someplace else, right? You, the, there may not necessarily. You have to build in some like collision protection there, of of updating and, but the other thought that I had is 
like this block of RAM. And maybe we have two different ones or something like that. Or a certain section of something, but. If we had a smaller, like one K byte or something, I don't know. Maybe in here we have connection number zero, IP address, port number, right? Then we'd have connection number one, two, three, four, whatever, how many ever we support. We could have uh, stuff about Wi-Fi networks. All these these variables, instead of defining specific commands for each one, you could just have this block of RAM. On the ESP side, you would just cast to these locations. But you could have it as a command like, oh, update this thing. And all that really does is set the pointer to point to one of those things, and then that's what's written to from the 6502. I kind of like the idea of these things being, if this is just blank, these might be message number zero address, and this thing might actually be a pointer somewhere into, into RAM. Um, so How do we want to get started here? I think that's the direction I want to go. I don't know, it's just so... flexible, maybe complicated, but You could add abstraction layers on top of it. Because part of the thing is, is at some point I'm probably going to have a cartridge that effectively just exposes this memory to the 6502. It would be actually program in the cartridge or something like that. So you can think of them as registers or whatever, but it's just RAM. So that would then allow the on a on a simpler hardware solution, the library could be doing these same things. It's just the the sixty five hundred two library code would change on which what the underlying hardware was. So maybe let's just start off by defining a buffer. Make a make an array. Uh,
Wait, that's not even... Part of me says, okay, well, so if this is integer, what's the max? I think it's a 32-bit micro. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that it has a 32-bit a address space. So we should... Be able to have a pointer point anywhere in the address space. So four pages would be one zero two four. If you had to deal with near and far pointers, <laughs> you know, a funeral for my own dreams. I'm pretty sure we don't. Not with the ESP set anyway. So I'm trying to figure out what I want here. Um. So four pages of 256 bytes is a K byte. Okay, yeah, yeah. So right now it's just, it's one, one K byte. The, we'll make the pointer an integer, but We can't, it can't be a byte, yeah, because to point the lat, you need three, zero to three FF. a pointer but the difference between an we just do message buff right or do we gotta do so I think we do message buff. That's basically what that is. Or we could say the address of index zero. I'm a little rusty on my C pointers. I think that'll work though. So let's just assume the data is there that the incoming packet put it there in the main function. We want the 6502 to be able to read that back now. Um, so there's gonna be some command for read 
read at the pointer. So I, I kind of want it to be similar to this. Um, but we would need some commands for set the pointer. Or maybe we think of them as, as, as smaller messages, but anyway, set pointer slash increment the message number, which is effectively done the same thing. We also need to do set uh, I guess it's read length. Because we we could and maybe this is like a special command to some degree. Right? We we set the pointer in the read length, there'd be some byte for the opcode. And then we'd have pointer value, some number of bytes, at least two. And then read length. So it could do that as a write instruction, a write opcode. And then next time it can just be the next opcode would be read at pointer. It would write one byte to do what was previously defined here. So we can assume those things for now. We just want to implement the read at pointer. Um, so we would be in in data mode so these are actually write commands
Are we gonna map um, the one K byte page or the 6502 need to read the registers? It has to read from the registers because literally all we have is we can't easily map the RAM that's inside the ESP. Hey Benji, uh, we can't easily map the RAM that's in the sixty-five or in the ESP to the sixty-five hundred two. All we have is this one byte buffer that data has to go in and out of. So the we have to. Uh, if it's requesting to read from RAM, we have to feed it one byte at a time through this. Yeah, I I do. It is like I've got my my dual port cartridge in a see-through green today. Anyway, this this cartridge has the hardware capable of. We could conceivably map that RAM. Uh, directly to the 6502, but that would look a little bit, it would still be the ESP. It's just, we'd have more than a byte. We'd have a, a buffer and uh, either I'd have a different microcontroller paying attention to what's going on better than the ESP can, or the ESP would get notified every time a byte changes, so there'd be actually two copies, but that's like 2022 stuff. Maybe two, maybe next year, I don't know. Just trying to keep it as simple as we can for now on the hardware side. Um, so, uh, and this is, well, and it's even more clumsy because this is, this is, this is really what's happening with this buffer. The 6502 can't write to that buff, that uh, register unless 5001 bit 7 is set. If that's set, then it's allowed to write. Oh, I can write, I can try, but it's only going to stick if that bit is set. Basically, the ESP has to allow it to, to do it. And that's it being in parallel mode. So if it's set, then it can write the command of 5000. This, so this is if it's wanting to send data. It has to, it can't write again until that's set again. You just keep repeating this for the payload, right? Here I'm poking and peeking slowly over frames, and so I can just assume that it's set, but I could go I could go check it. When we actually write 6502, we're gonna have to uh, have branches that only send the next byte if it's allowed to. Now for reading, <clears throat> it's a little bit different. So you still, before you send the command of, oh, hey, I want to start reading this data, you still have, it's the same thing here. You have to wait to 1007 to set, and then you write the command to 5000. But because we only have that one byte buffer, that whatever data this 6502 is requesting, it's not immediately in the spy register. The spy register has the command. The ESP needs to get that byte out, interpret the command, go get the data, and then put it into the spy register. So the only way we have to communicate somehow to the 6502 that the data is ready, and the way that we do that is we clear bit six of the 5001 register. Our spy register is at 5000. Our status register, this where whether we're, we can read or write is 5001. So bit six will be clear if the requested data is in the register. 
So then you can read the data. But the ESP is waiting. Well, it, right now the ES, the, we, this could be sped up a little bit in that the ESP could be aware when the byte was read so that it goes ahead and puts the next byte in there. Um, but the simplest solution is that the simplest hardware solution is that the 6502 has to write again and say, oh, hey, uh, give me the next byte. Now, technically, we can probably assume that if bit 6 is clear, that bit 7 is set. The 6502 is allowed to stomp over the data that it wants. So you write next. Or I guess to some degree you could write anything. If you wrote anything, if we were in this mode where it didn't matter what was written, because we know how many bytes want to be read, it's just the interrupt that comes from writing to the 5000 register that gives us the subsequent data. And to some degree, from the ESP perspective, if the mapper were smart enough to say, oh, the CPLD can sense when that read was made, when that read is made, then interrupt the ESP to put in the next byte. So I, I kind of like that. And that's really what we're going to have to do here. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the uh the they're pretty, you know, I mean fundamentally there's similar stuff going on. It's just they have more than four pins of connection, you know, when the registers are on the die. And uh yeah. This is this is how it has to look when you're externally tacking things on. The the NES right. Um the the NES has registers for the APU for for sound and I guess kind of the controllers. The controllers are actually a similar thing. This this process is kind of similar to how controllers are read, except those are only allowed to read one bit at a time. Um, but the APU, those registers are are they're on the same die, so they're completely uh, decoded. But if you want to read from the PPU bus. It's kind of a similar situation. We have to the 6502 has to set the address of the PPU, and then it reads the byte. The first byte it reads is trash because it's whatever happens to be in there, and then this the PPU fetches from the next byte. And you have like you have two modes that can increment the address by one or it can increment it by 32, which is actually like going down the screen. So. It sounds sad. <laughs> it's uh, a challenge. It's a rewarding challenge. Um, So let's see here. The 6502 is going to write a command. Read at pointer.
the pointer is going to already be have to be set up and the length of data to be read is also going to be set up now we could have a uh, a medium long mode right to where it's like read at pointer number of bytes in the lower nibble similar to what we did here or the length will be defined elsewhere. But either way, after we're in data mode, the command is stored and here's the thing. So the command come. This is where we did the the variables, the sixty four bytes of incoming and outgoing. If it's a read command, we just get the data and we put it. We send a spy byte that that one byte. This is what we're actually doing for, for write mode. For read mode, Fetch first byte. Well, and I don't know if <clears throat> really this might be something that the main has to handle. We we can have it so that the the first byte. is trash. That's kind of an easy way to do this. And in, in that case, if the pointer is set up, then really we're just send spy byte. What was it, message buffer? Yeah. But really, if we're using the pointer, uh, then we wanna dereference the pointer Um, do we put, forget, is that D reference or we? I forget the Yeah. This would just read the pointer. Yeah, we need we need the asterisk. Well, and we I kind of, so in the sense of, and you can tell me what you think here, but if we only, 
I mean, one idea would be to just kind of like we did before, have store the index and then increase the index. But other part of me wants to just generically say this pointer could be anywhere in the ESP uh, memory architecture, memory map, in which case it kind of makes more sense just to do it this way. Yeah. If we were always doing the same like buffer, then I, I would think of it that way too, but but oh Here's the thing that I'm not exactly sure of. How this 32-bit microcontroller handles byte accesses. Because if we, if RAM is, is 32 bytes, It would have to be, we have to keep, because if we increment the message pointer, then that's 32 bytes or 32 bits further in RAM. If the 6502 wanted to read its IP address or other metadata, then the message pointer could point to the memory holding it. Right, that's that's kind of the idea. And maybe that data is, is I don't, I'm not overly familiar with the the library. Oh, yeah, we set it to an 8-bit pointer. Okay. Yeah, so I th think this will work. I guess the thing is then is this this pointer may not be able to point to anywhere. in a 32-bit memory, or wait. Let's just try it and see what happens. So in this case, we To some degree, we stay in command mode because so the 6502 will wait for this to be set. It sends a command to start reading. I mean, this is the final else. Just go get data puts it in the register and clears 5006 6502 will read it from 5000 and then on the next command it's just going to keep reading and see pointers to unsigned chars Oh, okay. I think that makes sense. That's kind of what I was wondering, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, the number of times I do stuff like this, I have to get a lot of cobwebs out. So I think this will work. We're not even really we're we're just going to stay in command mode because it 
if if the command is not caught by any of these other commands, then we're just going to fetch whatever is at the pointer and put it in the five. Oh, but we do need to increment the pointer. So length is somewhat arbitrary. The nice thing about this is, is if the 6502 doesn't, sorry, emergency's upstairs. Oh. Kids are home. No school today with all the snow. Um, Yeah, basically you're doing the same thing as as array indexing and we've said that the array is is uh of size one byte effectively by by saying it's a pointer to an eight bit value. Is my understanding anyway. So the nice thing about this though is is say the 6502 is reading this big long message kind of slowly and it decides hey I I don't want to I, I don't care about this message anymore I want to do something else it the it can write some other command and start doing that this isn't actually this doesn't even really have a command associated with it it's just when a command doesn't match any other thing and you're in command mode then just read from the pointer so you could actually in the middle at least I'm the way I'm thinking this will work is you could be reading the message and be like, oh, do something else, some other command that would hit higher up here. And maybe you read that data back out again. But when you're done with that, if you're in command mode, right, you cleanly exited that, you could just keep reading from the current value of the pointer. So length doesn't matter, you just read as long as you want. Okay. If this works, it seems pretty slick. It sounds like a slick idea. Makes sense to you, stranger. Then, uh, You'll buy it for a dollar. Let's do it. Uh, we need to actually, we don't really have a good way to test this. We need to, oh, Stragger. 
Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Thanks for the correction. Bingo, bango. Stragger. Okay, Stragger. Let's get some data in here. If we have an incoming... If we have an incoming payload, let's just put it in this buffer. So... up here. Now we had these, this is where if the packet had uh, WVA or WVN for write variable numbers. So let's give, I don't really like this, but just as a bit of a placeholder. If the first letter is M, just for message, and maybe there could be a bit of a pointer and the subsequent bytes would be a pointer of where to start putting the data in the message, but I don't know. So if the first byte is the first character of the message is M, then we'll start putting it in the in the buffer. Um, like this. All right, thanks for stopping by. On our app data game. Well, and uh, we, one of the other things is kind of, I'd like to make this, uh, these types of things are doing agnostic to the, the communication protocol. So we could have these different connections and then set to whether TCP or UDP is being used or yeah, snake or oh, for some reason I thought you were snake. I didn't read it close enough. Super game maker, how we doing? Uh, yeah, this is something we'd like to sell. Um, want to help? Uh, NES developers making NES online NES games. Give them a, a cartridge to release on. Also, it would be fun to. Well, the goal is in like, I kind of have different uh, ideas for what this might look like, but in in this in the lowest cost option, want to have a game, have somebody be able to publish a game using this, and it could conceivably just be that cartridge is that one game because maybe they want to keep it constrained to that. Um, I think we can do it for uh, somewhere around $5 more than a comparable uh, MMC1 cartridge. So if you look up the, the MMC1 Worst case will be five dollars within an MMC three, but I, I think uh, we can do it within. So if you find the memory, well, really, and it's going to be probably uh, like SN ROM. I think this is a, a working link. Yeah. So I I think for a. I guess it'd be more like an S if you did 512k byte it would look something like I think we can keep it under 25 bucks for the board 
Now, I'm probably going to have a, a developer's version of this or like I'm hoping that uh, there'll be lots of like free games that you can download and play and maybe think of it more of like a, a flash cartridge of sorts that uh, I don't coffee. You could make games and share them freely and there could be servers uh, hosting different games and you could just download the game with the cartridge and play it. Um, and I'll make a cartridge that has more hardware compatible capabilities so that that cartridge has more purposes or more use than just this alone. <coughs> that would be more of I mean, you could use it to release a game, but it'd be more of uh, somebody buying it to develop games or to generically play any games that are released online for free or, or whatever people do. So, yeah. All right, so if we have an incoming packet that starts with M, yeah. Uh, no, it costs more than that. My margins aren't that high. Or are you talking about assembly? But let's see here. So we want the actual data is going to start at, it's just going to look just like this, I guess. For now, the the twenty five dollars is like assuming that you're gonna buy like a hundred of them or something, because yeah, you're releasing a game. But if you're just like selling one of the of the low cost version, I don't know, something like thirty thirty five dollars. Well, you know, it'd be like it'd be it'd come with a cartridge shell and all that stuff. But. This is still very much undetermined, but that's kind of the goal. All right, let's try to compile this guy. Okay. Um, all right. Switch over to the CRT here. So. Did it already start talking? Let's uh, let's write variable zero. Okay, that looks good. Let's. This is all stuff that's supposed to already be working. Let's write all the variables. Okay, now we should be able, to, if we want to read one of those variables, we set this to four zero. So this will read variable zero, which should be three zero. So we'll write it, we'll read it. There it is, three zero. So the, the cartridge, so this is what this is the valuable that we write and then the R is the is the value that's read um, so all that stuff's working now we have a different command and this already should be working if we want to write 
a message that's four bytes. We just write the value four. The length is in that lower nibble. Okay, so we can write A, B, C, D. Just keeps going. Hmm. What's going on there? That stuff was working before. Oh wait, what do we have to do for write command? Write command, the upper bit is supposed to be set. So we're actually reading. Okay, so if we want to write, we didn't we didn't actually have that implemented before we added that in. So really to write, we have to, it has to be eight four. Okay, so, so we'll write eight four. Now we'll, Right, A, oh. It hit a variable update instead of a, if variable command, if it's command and it shouldn't have hit this because we set 8.4. It should have been right, but not variable. Hmm. Maybe I'm confused. Let's just let's just power cycle it. I think I was confused what state we're in. Let's just jump straight there. So we're going to write four bytes. A, oh, it's still, it is. This 8.4, it doesn't seem that this is happening. Variable command plus write command ended with command. Because it just wrote. <laughs> so if command and variable command, it does this. This is what's supposed to be happening. If we go into data mode, we zero the index. But once we're in data mode, and it is, yeah, it's updating that. I wonder. 
but that should just be or I mean it should work it should be the same. Eight eighty plus forty is C zero. If we or it though, we or those two things. Wait, is my masking um Oh, man, that's my problem. Hold on a second. So this is saying command anded with C0, right? But if command equals 8-0, right? Then eight zero ended with C zero will be eight zero, and that is not zero. It's true. So then that okay. Oh, you can't see that. I thought you took off. <laughs> Oops. Thanks. Okay, that's my problem. Uh, I need to say. Part of me says I should just flip flop these. Um, wait a second. No. So if command and those things, so that masking equals going to tuck off then do laundry, so I'll do that. Meantime, you're still on my TV. Well, there you go. So that's here. I masked out those bits, and it was still a right, so it did this thing. So I take the command, I and it with that mask, and if it equals that mask. I'm trying to think if there's a simpler way to do this. I don't really know what it's synthesized or what it's compiling to, but let's just go with that. Strager, Strager. I just know next time I see you, I'm going to say stranger. All right. Okay. I need to use this mode here where <laughs> you might not be able to see the CRT very well, but if I forget to switch you over, then you're not stuck staring at giant. The exact values here. Really, what what we want to see is is this. So I'm going. You can't really see anything, can you? Anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna set bit eight. So we're gonna write eight zero. Oh, but we're gonna write zero bytes. So it should be done. I don't know what mode it's in. Hey, Dizzy Ninth, how we doing? I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself? We are trying to write some data here. I'm gonna power cycle because I don't know what's what's what mode it's in. I couldn't get my cartridge 
I know I tried to detect the flash in my cartridge just earlier today, so we just dug into the uh, we dug into the firmware implementing more than just the 64 variables. So now we're, we're trying to set up longer messages and stuff. We have it to where you can write. Oh, and that's not even that visible anyway. I don't get why my. If I stop using the camera, it changes the exposure on me. So let's see. We want to we want to write four bytes. So bit eight is set, and we're going to write four bytes total. So we send that command. Okay, and then what's the four bytes that we want to write? A, B, C, D. There it goes. So it sent, it counted four bytes and then it sent A, B, C, D. So that's that's working again. Let's make sure that we can write all the variables. It looks like that works. To read the variables, what do we do? We go 5,000. We want to read, so that's hex 40. So we write that command and then we read it. So we're reading variable number zero and we did get a zero or a three zero as our reply there. So we can read and we get three six and we read 46 which is zero one two three four one two three four five six yeah starts at three zero three six okay so that's all stuff that we had before that's not broken anymore let's If we want to write to the outgoing variable six, we use the command C zero, and then the value that we want to write there it is. So we wrote variable six and the outgoing and it went through. Okay. So it seems like everything else is working. Now The part that we just wrote is we, oh, I think this is only going to work one time because we didn't reset the point. We don't have a means of setting the pointer. This pointer just starts off at, oh, well, I th we'll, we'll try it. We'll try it. So if the first... an expensive read write I'm not 100% sure I think it's a joke if it costs five thousand dollars <laughs> there we go <laughs> uh, Okay, so we have, we're going to send a packet. The first uh, character is M, and then we have three bytes of nothing because we just haven't put anything in the header. And then this is just the message we're going to send. Let's send something more fun like beef. Okay. Actually, the data transferred over the Wi-Fi is put into RAM or flashed to the ROM. Flashing takes too long, so I guess it's into RAM. Well, it's wherever the 6502 code wants to put it. So it's reading one byte at a time out of the 5000 register. And we've yet to really write it, but there'll be ideas to have like helper functions that 
you would call this function and say you want to read this data and then store it at location whatever in in ram i mean you're right about it, it would be possible to put it in rom but the 6502 would have to manage all that the esp is not really going to do that for you now, there could be additional help functions on top of that i do have ideas of you make a new build of your game and the there's a boot rom on the cartridge that uploads that build onto the flash it'll take a minute or whatever to to do that but it, it would be possible it's just that all has to be done on the 6502 code okay so we're going to send this message now i think oh shoot wait maybe it's okay i see so for updates like dlc levels download it to ram and then yeah pla flash ram page into rom yeah now this cartridge you don't have to have ram if you're like publishing a game and you didn't really have more ram in the cartridge you're okay with the 6502's ram but uh like the generic version would have 32k bytes of of raw of ram to some degree you might be able to get all of your now i think i'm going to check the code here Um, command so I didn't actually say we didn't get an unknown command received so that's a good sign yeah it just automatic here this this incoming this happened but it didn't put beef in here it would appear yeah yep uh, I mean you you can get by with that if you want to but much like we have to read it I'll show you in a second hopefully it's there uh, it's in a right now it's just in that message buffer and the NES hasn't read it back out yet but yes uh, dizzy the cartridge will support ram similar to like mmc1 and mc3 games have 8k bytes of ram this will have the option to have 32. so conceivably you could fit a whole game in there and not have to run from flash but it all have to be downloaded or copied over from rom all right so to read back to read beef really yeah you can't buy ram smaller than 32k bytes really i buy a ram chip and it's 32k bytes whether or not you use it all is if it's available and present so the command that we write doesn't actually matter well it does it can't be a different command so if we just write um, zero, zero, it has to be a read command. So bits, bit seven has to be clear. We don't want it to be a variable command. We don't. So so we'll just write the command zero zero, which shouldn't be caught by any of the other code. Now the first byte that we read back so data byte zero. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna read the five thousand one nine zero. So bit seven is set and bit six is clear. So it is telling us that data should be present five thousand. We can read it. We have zero zero. Now that um should that not be b for beef let's just keep k 
can't find the beef. Did we actually, oh, here's, here's, no, here's where we messed up. We put the data in incoming. You can't see that. We put the data in the incoming buffer array. So we probably did stomp over the top of our incoming packet. Yeah, uh, yeah, right here. Here's the beef. We found it. It didn't go where we wanted it. Because this was... Zero one two three thirty hex ASCII zero one two three hex thirty through thirty th three. So the beef the beef went in the wrong spot. We want to put it in the message buffer. Now the other thing that we want to do is we want to when a new buffer when a new set of a packet comes in we want to um reset the pointer to the beginning now there will have to be some more comp or we'll probably want some more complicated ways of doing that but for now Oh, we want to do this at the end. So we should be able to send multiple, multiple, multiple that way. Let's flash that. Maybe that'll work. Get the beef where it belongs. But uh, to kind of expound upon what we're talking about there, Dizzy, oh, would we get an error? Unknown command receive. Oh, I, I think my, uh, oh, it doesn't like my conversion. Um, cast that into a into a byte. Invalid conversion from pointer. Oh, I need to do not that's the instantiation you want to say it's a type pointer over here we're just saying the pointer equals the buffer the beginning of the buffer let's try that so this this data that we're these messages that we're sending back and forth dizzy they uh most of the i mean if unless the game is just meant to be downloaded from the internet or wherever and played uh, the real goal is to be able to have games that can also communicate to other players on the internet and so these messages would have information about the game state and stuff like that stuff that you wouldn't necessarily want to permanently store in the flash 
So most likely just in the 2K of RAM on the cartridge on the console. Or if you really want a lot of RAM, then you could have it. Yeah, I got the option. But I mean, that's true for all games. You can always, for most mappers, you, you always have the option to put more RAM on the cartridge. But whether or not it's it's worth the added cost is up for debate. But I'm putting the. I want to have this the the option for it. Okay. So let's see. Let's just assume all. Let's not re-verify everything. Let's just send the beef. Okay, so we didn't actually change the the uh, variables. That's that's good. That's where the beef ended up last time. Now we should just be able to write and read. Hey, look at that. Forty-two B. Write, read. Forty-five E. Write, read. 45, E again. Write, read. 46. We found the beef. It's $5,000 beef for you there. Okay. So, let's try to... Dead. Or dead beef. So let's see if we, we so we want to we want to read the message we just write 0 and we read 44 What's 44? Oh D It's 44 D Yeah Okay 45 E 41 A 44 D 42 B E E F There we go. We did it. You can send That's all ASCII, but forty-eight. Yeah, forty-five. E. Four C. Four C. L. Four F. O. Five F. Underscore. I'm guessing. I hope I don't know what four is it five F yep 50 for P 41 a 55 U 4 C L there we go we did it I'm I'm a little, I really didn't expect, um, this to be so elegant, I guess. So I, let's test my theory that we could, we could be reading a message. We don't have to, we, we, we can, we're not obligated to read the remainder of it. Now we'd want to double buffer it or something. Um, if we don't want the, you know, another packet comes in, it'll, it'll stomp that one and, and make a new one. We'll have to come up with some means of, of intelligently setting that pointer where we want it to me what message we want to read or whatever it is but 
with this setup if it's not one of our other predefined commands then it's just fetch the next byte so let's but let's let's test that it should already work should being the keyword so if we if we just keep reading i think yeah we're getting all zeros um because we're reading into the message buffer that has never been something else so um so let's send dead beef all right so that message is in the buffer we can start reading it 44 45 so we read d e Just making a smaller ASCII table for myself instead of reading it online. Okay, whoops. I don't know what I just did. I think I hit select and read the next byte, yeah. So 41, D, E, A, right? So the next, the next byte from the message should be D, hex 44. So let's, uh, instead of d reading the next byte, let's update one of our variables variable number zero we want to write that to one eight write it okay so it it sent updated it sent the packet if we want to let's use let's use our buffer to update all of the the incoming variables okay that's done let's go ahead and read the D 44 D so B is going to be the next um, let's let's read some of those variables so to read we want to send four zero we'll read the first variable we'll so we'll send that command and then we'll read back so that gave us a three zero that's right so now we should be able to read b out of the message or write zero or read back b 42. there we go uh a feature that i didn't anticipate I was a little bit that that is a significant benefit of this having to request the next byte well if you're if you're just reading payloads of data yeah it's a bit of annoying now we could get rid of that and to get rid of it all that would really have to happen is that the mapper well it would have to it would have to uh when 5000 was read the mapper would want to clear it 
because it needs to send something that is not uh, a command. Just the interrupt happens. You, you're not requesting me to do anything else, so I'm going to put the next byte in there. But the so if the CPLD on reads from 5000 also cleared basically a read from 5000 caused a write of zero um you, you want some protections there but you could do it and then the 6502 could just check for 5006 clear that the data was fetched but with this setup where it has to be requested um You can you can stop in the middle and do something else. You're not obligated to finish reading that. So four thirty. What are some of the things that we want? We have this 1K byte message buffer. Um, in reality, I'm, I'm thinking that that this would be a message buffer, and this is like the metadata. Um, we could have different pointers. I don't know. I don't. Know, I, th I think I'm going to call it a day. Um, we a bit of a recap, I guess. We kind of just proved everything working, but. Um, we today we sup have the ESP supporting uh, messages of effectively arbitrary length. Um, we we set up a one k byte message buffer, which the sixty five hundred two can write to. It has two different options. It can set a write length with the lower nibble. We'll show this quick. So if I want to write, the upper bit has to be set. And then the lower nibble, if I don't set bit 5, I think it is, I can have the length in the lower nibble. So this means I want to write a message of f four bytes long. So I write that. And then what do I want to write? So let's just write hex A, B, C, D. And there it, so after four bytes were written, it sent a packet of A, B, C, D. You could also, so if we want to, if we want to send a longer message, you could set, uh, so this would be zero. It doesn't have, it's not actually being paid attention to. I guess that's one option for writing a longer message. Maybe you could, you could put the, uh, I hadn't thought about that before. Let me make that note quick here. Um, I know you can't see it, but whatever. 
we'll get back to that. So we can send data from the cart to the Wi-Fi. Yep, that's what we're that's what we just did. Yep, indeed. So, uh, so we want to send. Uh, if we want it, we want the next byte to be the length of the message. Then we have to set. Uh, which it's it's. I think we have to. Similar to rainbow. It would be two zero hex, but we want the upper bit to be set as well. So that is that's A. So A. Okay, so we're gonna write a message of undetermined length A. How long is that gonna be? Let's uh, let's send a 32 byte message. So 20 bytes, 20 hex. So that's how long it's going to be. Now we can A, B, C. I'm just going to write a bunch of times. Change the letters. I'm not counting. Whatever. There it's sent. So it waited until 32 bytes were sent or, or written to the 5000 register and then it, it sent it. Now we can receive similarly. Well, it's actually a little bit simpler. So the way I have it set up right now is we send a packet if the first character is M then it ends up in the message buffer we're not really paying attention to the next three so we're just gonna send a message dead beef from our host machine here but this could be you know a server online it could be a peer console we send that okay it happens anytime we send packet it, it it up it tell the debug message tells us what the variables are but nothing changed there so now if we want to read the message all we do is we write zero it happens to not match any of our other so it got zero it just uh it's gonna read we can read back the first letter D for hex 44 is is ASCII D I, I I'm pretty sure yeah so then we write zero again we can read the next letter E A D B E E F and then we can keep reading and we actually like see the old message it whatever it doesn't actually clear it out it just null terminates it um so if you had arbitrary binary data in there you'd want to have some sort of header to to have the message tell you how long it is as you start reading but that's a, a different layer so uh the 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 reading is actually pretty simple because what happens is, is when we have a command written and it doesn't match these other addressing modes, none of the upper bits are set, then the last, the last else is just going to read a byte from the current point value of the pointer, send it to this by register, and increment the pointer for next time. So that allows uh, you, you don't you can stop reading anytime you want. 
or you can read half of a message, go update some other thing, and then keep reading the message. It, it's not... Uh, to some degree, kind of multitask the ESP in that way. Um, so if your main thread of the 6502 was, was you know, consuming a, a packet, consuming a message, as long as, and you had an interrupt, an IRQ occur or something for some other thing, because some incoming thing, you had, you're writing data, well, I guess writing wouldn't necessarily work, but if you're reading a packet and another one came in and an interrupt happened, whatever, you could, something else, it would allow, it gives you some freedom there anyway. So we, uh, yeah, we've got arbitrary, we, we, we could make this message buffer as big as we wanted to really. And conceivably, we could set it anywhere in the the address space of the ESP processor. So <clears throat> next time, I think we're gonna work on some of this other stuff. We we effectively have just this. Uh, I'm thinking we might have it. You know, we it wouldn't be crazy to have as big as eight k bytes. Even with what we have now, where did it go? There it is. We're at 45%, 37K out of 80. Um, yeah. So we could have a different array that had metadata for connection numbers, ports, Wi-Fi network that you want to connect to, pointers to message numbers that are in this generic message buffer. Maybe we could even someday have a 6502 emulator on here. I don't know, for fun. You could task it as a coprocessor, load up 6502 code in here have it execute on here mm. that might be fun so anyway uh, yeah some decent progress I couldn't we waste a bunch of time trying to get this cartridge flashable in the beginning of the stream and it didn't work out no matter what well if I if I flash the MMC one uh, build onto the CPLD I can I can read and write the cartridge but I couldn't get I can get it here I don't know why so hopefully I'll get that fixed off stream by next week and uh, yeah we do the metadata next time and Kind of like how things are turning out so far. Our interrupt service routine is growing, but it's not crazy long. I mean, the amount of code that's that's being processed each interrupt is not that much because only one of these things happens each time. Oh, this isn't even actually done here. And that was the other thing that we made note of. The lower nibble of the opcode could actually say which, if we had different message numbers or something, we could we could put in we could code in there which message to actually update but right now we just have a generic uh, message buff or a main buffer here this is the data that gets sent but maybe you set it to zero and it automatically goes to the next message or if you set it to some non-zero value 
then it'll do that specific one. I don't know. We'll think about that, but uh, yeah. So thanks for everybody that uh, stopped by this week, and uh, we'll catch you next week.